as a bug. So they occupy a special place in our psyche. So where do we begin? Well, do you want to read this, Sue? Or? Oh, I can. Uh, this is from my journal, uh, June 17, 2011, Sandridge State Forest. The milkweed by the ranger's house is not as productive as in the past. Like the tide, by visiting Sand Ridge regularly, we watch the species ebb and flow. Today's trash species, American copper and gorgoni checkerspot, are dripping from the butterfly weed. We hit 50 species for the year in the middle of a field of budding common milkweed, surrounded by courting regals and calling dick thistles from nearby stunted trees. Um, that was a soldier beetle. Uh, June 18th, 2011. Um, this happens to be one of the second, this was the second Amaquan class, core discovery classes that we were teaching. I'm still picking cactus spines from my knee and ankles. The other knee supports a lone star tick. Yesterday, what a day. Hot, humid, wore a bandana around my head like a wounded soldier. It soaked through twice. All day we drove, hopped out, found our target or unexpected treasure, and then on to the next site. Today, while teaching a class, the day is clear and less humid. I am confined. I want to be out there doing it all over again. <clears throat> this is what it's like to be interested in butterflies. And we'll explain this a little bit more. So the title of today's talk is very simple, The Butterflies of Illinois. Okay. So and I have been all over the world, we've seen lots of things, but we live in Illinois, and Illinois is a very, very special place. We're also scientists, so if you're going to learn butterflies, there's going to be a certain amount of terminology that inserts its ugly head, and one of these are the families, are the groups of butterflies in Illinois. Now the good news is, if you were doing beetles, 237. Okay. Butterflies, five. Right? Papillionidae, Pieridae, Riodinidae, Mycinidae, and Nymphalidae. So, if you're interested in butterflies, those are five scientific terms you need to learn. Alright? No problem. How many, how many families are there in North America? Butterflies? Yeah, roughly. About the same. <laughs> yeah. So, it depends on, if you're on a coastline, you might get some... You know. So, let's back up and let's look at where butterflies fit into the scheme of taxonomy. The order of Lepidoptera. When I was a kid, collecting butterflies at nine years old, I called it Lepidoptera. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense, right? I was in college where I heard somebody pronounce it. Lepidoptera, what is that? Oh, yeah, right? So, <laughs> Lepidoptera. The order Lepidoptera. The butterflies. They include the butterflies. So, butterflies account, those five families, account for only 8% of the Lepidopteran insect species in the world. Okay? Moths are far more common, accounting for 92% of Lepidopteran species. To give you an example, in Illinois, 100 species of butterflies, 2,000 species of moths. Is there going to be a field guide to the moths of Illinois? No. <laughs> so what makes a butterfly a butterfly? Well, five characteristics, or four characteristics. They're diurnal. Anybody know diurnal? Fly during? You know, unlike birding, which is totally uncivilized, you get up at dawn, you go out. Butterflies, 10 to 3. You get up, have a nice breakfast, go out, kind of hang around, have lunch, stay out till about three, and go take a nap, right? It's a very civilized group of organisms. They're visually orienting. In other words, they use sight as a primary means of finding things. What does that tell you about them? They're going to be brightly colored for the most part, right? They have knob antennae. You can see that right there. And they hold their wings together over the thorax. What does that mean? Well, moths hold their wings together over the thorax, but then they fold them down. Right? Butterflies? No. They're just stuck out there. Right? Like, kind of like a dragonfly, more like a damselfly. So, 
any insect in Illinois that has those four characteristics, we're going to call a butterfly. So, a little derivation here. The name, how many of you, what, what does the word butterfly come from? First question everybody asks, well, what, where does that come from? Well, people used to think it came from rancid butter in England because <laughs> butterflies would be attracted. No, that's not it at all. The name is likely derived from Middle English, butterfly, or butterfly, butterfly, or from Old English, butterfly, <laughs> butterfly. And butterfly is perhaps a compound of booter, beater, and wing, to beat. Now, if you think about it, how many insects can you actually see their wings beat? You know they're beating, but you don't see it. A butterfly? Yeah. So it, it, it makes pretty good sense. This is the derivation. So, butterflies. How many species worldwide? 17,000 to 500 to 20,000 species. We were in Manu National Park a few years ago, an area about the size of one of the counties in Illinois, Livingston County, has 2,000 species of butterflies. Half of which have no names, right? But you see one of each. You don't see groups of them, you see one of each. How many species in North America? 725 to 750, depending on the year, depending on how much we've split, how much we've cut apart. How many in Illinois? About 100. So we went from something totally unmanageable to something, eh, to, oh yeah, we can do that. We can learn a hundred things. Right? You know a hundred different makes of car. Okay. Maybe? You got a hundred recipes anyway. I know. Yeah, I got a hundred cookie recipes. You got a hundred cookie recipes. I'm ready. That's that another reason we got you and I win. <laughs> so, let's do a little science here. Here are the five families. Let's look at them one at a time and see if you can pick out some characteristics that might make something one of these families. For example, the family Papillionidae. There's one. There's one. There's another one. There's one. There's one. And there's one. That's basically all the species you're going to see in Illinois. There are actually eight been found here, but these are the ones that in some places in Illinois you can see all six species in one day. Susan, so in my record, we saw all six of them in one hour once in Vermilion County at a seat. Okay. So look at these butterflies. They're all in the same family. What, what's a characteristic that sticks out? Yeah, they've got tails. They're all different shape, but they all have tails. These are the swallowtails. Okay? It's a worldwide group. So, characteristics. They're big. Big butterflies, tails on the hind wings. There's eight recorded species from Illinois, two of which are tropical, what it happened to have blown up. Uh, these are the six that you'll see. Giant swallowtail, tiger swallowtail, black swallowtail, spice bush swallowtail, pipe vine swallowtail, and zebra swallowtail. No problem, okay? Got that one. Seeing them flying through the forest or through the prairie on the wing? Yeah. yeah, still do it. All right, let's look at this one. The Pierity. There's one. There's one. There's one. Another one. A bit like dogs. There's one. Another. Another. And another. Characteristics? What's the common name of this group? Whites and yellows. <laughs> Oranges and yellows. What, but basically, whites and yellows. Okay? So the white, yellow, or orange, medium to small. This is one of the smallest Illinois. These aren't the scale. This is one of the Illinois' smallest <laughs> butterflies. 16 recorded species in the state, 11 of which you can find in any one given year. Okay? So it's getting a little bit more complicated. Sleepy orange. Uh, what's the common name of that one? Um, alfalfa, butterfly. alfalfa butterfly, dainty dwarf, dog face, see the poodle, orange tip, this one, 
Olympia marble. Probably Illinois' coolest butterfly. Guess where it lives? Sand Ridge. Right here. East Central Illinois. Cabbage white and checkered white. Checkered white. Okay. So and several others. So seeing these on the field, on the wing, yeah, you can do it. You gotta pay attention, right? What about the Lycenids? Hmm. Show sure the top and bottom. There's a pair. There's a pair. There's a pair. Top and bottom. Hmm. Characteristic? Small. About the size, no bigger than a quarter. Some of them as small as a dime. Brightly colored. If you look closely at them. Uh oh. 29 species. Okay? These are the little guys you see flitting around. Okay? You have the harvester, his own subfamily. Bronze, uh, bronze copper. Gray copper. Edwards, hair streak. You see the little tails? This one is really cool. The olive hair streak. Hoary elfin. Illinois' most common butterfly. Eastern pale blue. Illinois' rarest butterfly, probably. The carnar blue. Four. The last issue of, uh, what is it? McKinley County Conservation Area, their, new, their monthly magazine, had a picture of the Eastern tail blue on the cover and said, rare kind of blue discovered in... <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wrong. It was, it was McKinley County, it was either McKinley or Lake County. But anyway, so learning these, it's a little bit more tricky. First of all, many of them are, are very cyclic. You don't see them very often. Uh, we have a friend who's... Uh, a, a, leads birding tours around the world. He's been everywhere. He's seen snow leopards in the Himalayas. He's seen tigers in India. You name it. You know what his big goal in life is to see? A harvester butterfly. It's cool. You know why? Because the larvae are predators. They, they have piercing, sucking mouth parts, and they feed on woolly apple aphids. Okay? So it's a very cool insect. So harvester, you know, so, identifying these, yeah, maybe. These are called gossamer winged butterflies. <coughs> the real dinids, this group's easy. This is a tropical group. There are thousands of species of real dinids. In the, on the road up to Machu Picchu, we hiked part of the way up. There were dozens of species of real dinids, spectacular creatures. In Illinois, That's it. And we don't even have this one. This one should be here. This is the swamp metal mark. This is the northern metal mark. That's it. Okay? Too far north. This one is only found in Illinois occasionally. Small size, long antennae in proportion to the body. That's something you learn from experience. Small metallic spots covering, and we have a single species. And it feeds on a single species of plant, the swamp. Thistle, Circium muticum. So if you have swamp thistle, you have a chance, right? Swamp thistle is a denizen of seeps and wetlands. And finally, the nymphality. There's one. Yeah, we're gonna know that one. Maybe know that one. Yeah, maybe. Characteristic, the front pair of legs are not visible. If you look at them, you know, all insects have six legs, right? We know that. Except if you look at the nymphality, you can only see four. They're called brush-footed butterflies, with the exception of this one, which has six legs. Okay. 
The good news about entomology is every time you say an absolute, there's an exception. The medium to large size, the color, the shades of autumn, right? Browns and reds and oranges. Uh-oh, 47 species. Holy crap. It's getting a little bit more intimidating. But they're very diverse, you know, and they're pretty easy to tell apart. So the snout, the monarch, great spangled fritillary, uh, red spotted purple, tawny emperor, which when I was a kid was the most was one of the most common butterflies. How many tawny emperors have you seen in the last 20 years? Three, maybe. Morning cloak, goatweed, common wood nymph. They all have specific places where they frequent. Here, to show you, here's a brush-footed butterfly. How many wing legs do you see? See two? And then there's this tiny little tail like that. They use them for sensory. They don't know if it's for sex or for food. They don't come out much. Right? You only see, if you look at a monarch, you only see four legs. Have you ever looked at a monarch? Yeah, we, we, had this, we had this conversation at our house one time. Yeah. How can they be insects? Exactly. They only have four legs. legs. That's right. This is why. Right? <laughs> They're there, you just can't see them. All right. So, that's it. Okay? You're now ready to understand butterflies. So, to understand, to, but to, for realistic purposes, we've divided butterflies in Illinois into categories. A regular part of the Illinois fauna. They breed and they overwinter here. Right? They survive, they, they're adapted for this climate. Tiger swallowtail is an example. A regular part of the Illinois fauna. They breed here, but they do not survive the winter. It's too cold. They reek colonies each year from the south. Depending on how far down the bad winter goes, that's how far north they have to come. The variegated fritillary, which you see every year does not live in Illinois. Except two years ago when we had a really mild winter, they survived. Irregular visitors from adjacent areas, things that fly in. If you go down to where the Illinois River, I mean then the Ohio River and the Mississippi River meet, there's a little park there called Fort Defiant State Park. It was a big field of late fall aster. About one year out of three or four, you can find gulf fritillaries there, which is a gulf coast species. But that's it. And, and once in a while they wander up. That's what we mean by an irregular visitor. They feed on passion flower. You know, they can survive. They can breed here, but can't survive here. And then we have rare strays, like the orange barred sulfur, which is a tropical species. But it's a really powerful flyer, so you get a really strong southern wind. It has shown up in Illinois. Accidental visitors, like the Atala. The Atala feeds on a plant in the Everglades. One was collected in Carbondale in 1926, I think. So it's in the book. How did it get there? There used to be a high-speed rail, in the, well, past the high-speed rail in the 20s, from South Florida to Carbondale. And they brought up a load of plants, and it, this was probably in it. It was, it was identified by George Hazen French, SAU, the person, a French shooting star, and you know. So, accidental, that's an accidental. You gotta, you gotta have to find an Atala, you better bring your lunch, your dinner, your supper, and the rest of your lifetime to find one. Possible species that could occur here, but seldom recorded. This is the great purple hair streak. Big population in Paducah, Kentucky. Feeds on mistletoe, which have an abundance in southern Illinois. It's been collected once in southern Illinois. Are we not looking in the right place? We don't know. And finally, extirpated species, like the Diana fritillary, named after Diana, of course, right? <laughs> this is a denizen of the Appalachians, eastern Kentucky, east Tennessee, with a population in Arkansas. It used to be a population in southern Illinois. It's not been seen for, what, 80 years? Okay, so. Are they in Wisconsin? No, southern. Okay. So, of all of these, you see, okay, you're gonna, 
what's going on for butterflies in the way? What, what categories do you think are your best chances of success? Those three, right? Those three categories. Regular part, for those that come in every year, and, and to chance your regular, those are the ones you're gonna <laughs> find. If you find any of these, holy crap, you probably wouldn't know it anyway, because it's somewhere, <laughs> you wouldn't tell. Well, that can't be, you know? So, these. So that's the, we're, we're subdividing to make this easier to understand. So, when Sue and I decided, and Jim Wiker decided to do a butterfly field guide uh, in, what, four years ago? We started working on it, and it soon became obvious that we didn't have enough material to do it. We had, we had the written part, we had about, what, half of the photos that we needed, maybe, maybe that. So Sue and I decided uh, in 2011, we're going to do a big year. And you know, birders, we all know that big year is an informal competition among birders to see who can see or hear the largest number of species of birds within a single calendar year. There have been lots of big years, right? Familiar. But a big butterfly year, there's only been one that was done countrywide. It was done by Robert Michael Pyle, okay, 19, 2010, 2009, something like that. Here he is, and he wrote a book called Mariposa Road, which is, I'm not gonna say it's a brilliantly interesting book, it is informative. Uh, it's what, 500 pages, and it would be much better if it was 250 pages. <laughs> Here he is. He spent some time in Illinois with, with Jim Wiker, and we, we met him, and, you know, and the first time he saw a regal fridlary in Illinois, he mistook it for a monarch. <laughs> yeah, because he wasn't used to seeing regal fridlaries, right? So, anyway. So in 2011, Sue and I undertook a butterfly big year for the state of Illinois, not to get big numbers. We heard a lot of them. Right? For the welcome but to accumulate images for the book. So our goal was not just to see them all, but to photograph every one of them that we saw. All right? So Pyle saw 477 species of the 700, but he also included skippers. All right? So this is, not, this is a, an additional family. He included skippers in it. So uh, maybe 400 species, maybe 350 species of actual butterflies. So here's our butterfly big year data, 2011. So potentially in Illinois, <coughs> theoretically there's 104 species that we could have theoretically that have been seen in Illinois. Number of species possible, that's categories one, two, and three, for four, 76. How many did we see? 65. Pretty oh, good. Crappy. No, it's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Try it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> If you do that analytically, that's 62% of the possible fauna. Well, you know, yeah, that, that number is meaningless. This is the important number. We saw 85.5% of the number of species that were reasonably possible. Some things we just did not see in the right kind of right place. Who knows? So we got almost 86% of the species, and we got photographs of the <coughs> which is not a trivial undertaking. So, where do you go? Where's the, some of the best butterfly views? Sue and I went to 30 sites 54 times. And then we didn't do it all day, every day, you know. So we went, we went on 54 separate trips to 30 sites around the state of Illinois. And here are the best sites that we found, <laughs> at least in 2011, for butterflies. Number one. Right here. I believe it. Who knew? Who knew? Right? Both sides of the river. Right here in River City. Number, 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 of number of species, number of individuals, easy <coughs> thing, uh, but numbers, numbers of species. Uh, a record for one day is 30 species in one day. Okay? And that was right here. Kankakee and Iroquois County. Who knew? Right? We got 
30 species there when when in one day sand. too. Southern Illinois, not necessarily for huge numbers of species, but species you see nowhere else, right? Because look where we are. We're way down here. <coughs> Vermilion County. You remember at Forest Glen Seat, we saw all six species of swallowtail in one hour. The last time the swamp bell mark was seen in Illinois, it was in that seat. Yep. Okay, the question comes to mind. What do you see or think is the reason why those areas are so prominent in the weather Is it the I'll, 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 I'll get to there. Soil, I'll get to there. Okay. okay. So sleepy. All right. Pine <laughs> County? Yeah. Yes. All right. Allison Park. You know, that was a good speech. That, a lot of that might be because it was close, but no, that wasn't it at all. And then Chicago region, simply because they were the same reason for Southern Illinois. There are things here that occur nowhere else. You have to go up there to find stuff. So, and then, believe it or not, Fayette County, Effingham, primarily one, two sites, right? The, Prairie Chicken Sanctuaries and Ballard Nature Center. Okay, I'll we'll tell you why in a moment. So, the most productive counties for butterflies in 2011 Mason County, Iroquois County, Johnson County, Hope County, and Vermilion County. That's by number of species, number of individuals, and so forth. So, pretty interesting. Over here, boy, not much. Okay? Not much. Let's look at Mason County. Why? All right, you ask why. Okay. Mason County is okay. It has unique habitats that occur nowhere else in the state. Sand prairies, sand savannas, sand dunes, and old fields around here are, are much better than old fields anywhere else. So spring, sand ridge, get landscapes like this. This is an unmanaged sand prairie. You know what Sandwich State Forest, so the site superintendent lives on top of the hill, right next to his house. Okay. This is an old field around here. Really? Yeah, this is a foul field, you know. Great butterfly habitat. This is just driving around through rural Basin County. So, here in a day you would see American copper, you would see Edwards Hair Streak, Burgoni Checker Spot, Gray Comma, sitting on raccoon dung on the road in Sand Ridge. The best place, raccoon dung in Sand Ridge State Forest. <laughs> <laughs> After a nice rain, butterfly love, loves omnivorous species. Okay? Gray uh, Hair Streak. Uh, Hackberry. Hackberry, thank you, my brain is old. Joe, we didn't tell you for the eye wind, you're going to have to see places with raccoon dung. I'm on it. Oh, That's part of your I'll tell you a little story about that in a minute. I'm on it. And harvesters. There's a couple places in San Luis you can go and you see harvesters. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that guy's been all over the world, he's got to come to Mason County. Mm -hmm. And probably one of the I love our that. favorite species. The Olympia marble, okay? yeah. a spring ephemeral. Liz got a picture now, of that. In April, a little bit into May, Sand Ridge is the seat of diverse of, of population. It occurs in other a few other places in Illinois, but here, this is where you come to see it. And guess what? This flies with cabbage whites. Uh, yeah. Right? So you have to know the difference. I think it's got something to do with Goofy Ridge. Yeah. <laughs> Mason County, Scrub Oak Sand Prairie Nature Preserve. This is one square mile of Oak Savanna, of Sand Prairie, and Old Field. Great place for butterflies. And look, who wouldn't, if you're a butterfly, you go, holy crap. Look at all that. You know, you've got food plants, you got nectar plants, you got this vast expanse of landscape. And no matter what time of year you go, you've got something different. This is sand of uh, primrose. Right? So there's always something 
the feed on going on. And you know, you got monarda, you got butter, you got all these nectar plants in this beautiful landscape. So here, American painted lady, not painted ladies, but American painted lady. Yeah, eastern tail blue. Giant swallowtail, the female. Monarchs. You think, oh, monarchs. No, monarchs are getting harder to find. You can always find them here. And of course, the regal fridlary, which is a federally endangered species in Illinois. It's only a threatened species because of places like Cambridge. We've seen as many as 150 individuals in one afternoon. This is the one when Robert Michael Powell saw this. He said, oh, there's a monarch. But Wagner said, look closely. <laughs> oh my god, it's a regal. And the next 30 you saw were regals. Right? The reason we're holding the class in, in June is when the regals fly. Okay. All right. Where else in Mason County? Revis Hill Prairie. Huh? Really? Hmm. Simply because it's a hill prairie, it's got lots of plants on it, but the base and the road are great for butterflies. It has a, a top of, of uh, lousewort in the springtime. It has just a great diversity of plants. In the summertime, along the base of the road, when they don't mow it, it looks like this or this. You walk the road, dog face sulfurs. Not easy to see. Not easy to find, not easy to identify, but you do see one. Edwards Hair Street? No, that's an uh, elfin. Oh. What am I, what am I trying to say? That's, a, that's the, like, the, that was one of the elfins. Oh, you don't know which one? No, it was like hoary. It wasn't hoary. No, it's Henry's elfin. Henry's. Thank you. Henry's elfin, which flies when the red buds bloom. Okay. Huh. The second most common butterfly in Illinois, the pearl crescent. You see here, dimorphic, with the female and the male. Here in Illinois is one of the few places you can see the summer brood of the zebra swallowtail, which looks very different from the spring brood. Masses of hackberries sitting on done. <laughs> it's like Clark Road. Iroquois County Conservation Area, Iroquois County. Anybody ever been to Iroquois County Conservation Area? Really? <laughs> it's a wet shrub prairie. It's the rarest habitat in Illinois. Okay. Great, it looks like the African savanna, and yet it's got uh, various species of, of cinnamon fern and royal fern and what's growing in because it's growing on wet sand. It has a sand savanna, and it is interspersed with nectar plants. It's a very interesting, very unique looking habitat. And the dominant blooming plant in June is comet root. Really? Yes. Butterflies love comet root. Where's Iroquois? Where's Iroquois County Conservation Area? North. Where Iroquois County butts up to Kankakee County and Indiana border. Okay. okay. So, look at all the butterflies on these colic roots. So, on any one day, you can see, uh, I, uh, not I brown, little wood satter. You can see great spangled fritillary. You can see uh, coral hair streak. You can see Aphrodite fritillary. You can see the Appalachian eyed brown. I only know of two populations in the state. You can see the meadow fritillary. You can see the variegated fritillary. We've seen all five species in one day. We saw four of them sitting on one plant. Did I get a picture of it? No. <laughs> and the silver border fritillary. And finally, the regal fritillary. All in one day, in one spot. Okay, within a couple of hours. And they're all on that same plant too. They're all on this colic root. They love, butterflies love colic root. Does it look like a lily? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it when Robert like Michael Pyle did it, he went here and he called it orchids. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, not orchids. All right. Pine Ridge, there's another place in the Earthquake County. Pine Ridge Cemetery Prairie. We know it as Loda Cemetery Prairie. The five acre, pristine, <coughs> and uh, four years ago, they bought a 10 acre cornfield around it, buffered it, planted it, and the butterfly fauna skyrocketed. Okay. Here's Pine Ridge Cemetery Prairie. Here's the border around it. Here's the border around it. Here you can see black swallowtails. It's not easy to see black swallowtails anymore in a while. Buckeyes mating. Uh, uh, checkered white. Checkered white. This is a female. Codless sulfurs and common wood nymph, either with the yellow form or the white form. Okay, there's two populations of these. There's a prairie species and then there's a savanna species. I mean a savanna subspecies. And when they put in that buffer, there was a swale in that cornfield. And guess what came up? Numax. Yeah. Duck. <coughs> Food plant of the gray copper. So the gray copper showed up. A few years ago when the Grand Prairie friends they hire interns to manage their landscapes, the first thing they did was wanted to ring it out the Rumax. No! <laughs> Please, don't. Leave it alone. Bodies Prairie. Bodies Prairie is a nature, pres nature preserve owned by Grand Prairie friends. And it's a sand pond that has pickle weed in it. Right? We don't go there for the pickle weed, we don't go there for the sand pond, we go there for the bronze pond. Right? Another species, this is a species on Rumex, wet sand, viceroys regularly, red spotted purple. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Vermilion County, Forest Glen Seep. Most people go to Forest Glen Seep in the springtime to see skunk cabbage and marsh marigold. Huge expanses of it. Go there in August when it's hot. The seep is basically dried up and it's full of Joe Pie weed and, and various uh, eucatorms and other sorts of things. But what you can find there are little yellows, painted ladies, all six species of swallowtails, including the pipeline, question marks. Spicebush swallowtails, even honey emperors. We saw 30 species in an area that is not any bigger than this building, not even as big as this building. So, and we looked and looked, and this is where the swamp milk swamp thistle grows. So we looked and looked and looked for the uh, swamp metal mark. Did not find it. All right, let's go all the way south. Polk County. Shawnee National Forest, embedded deep in the Shawnee National Forest, are unique habitats called barrens. A barren is where this, the bedrock comes to the surface, and this one is limestone. And because it's hot, dry, the soil is crappy, the trees are small, wide dispersed, and there's prairie vegetation underneath. This is a typical creek, this is a typical barrens, Simpson Township barrens near Simpson. Uh, probably, uh, you know where it is. There, you've probably been there. Yeah. Two things to know about Simpson Township Barrens. If you want to get a terminal infestation of ticks and chiggers, that's your spot. Okay. Right? <laughs> the other thing is, it has a wonderful butterfly fauna because one of the plants that blooms there regularly is purple milkweed. And butterflies love purple milkweed. We go there to see the diversity of butterflies, but you notice here, great spangled fridlight, great spangled fridlight, great spangled fridlight. <laughs> what is that? A little black and white. <laughs> That's the Ozark checker spot. That's probably the, one of the most difficult butterflies to see in Illinois because it's, it, it's, a habit, its habitat is dry, sandstone, limestone, barren. This Illinois feeds on false. Oh, false foxglove. False foxglove. Uh, 
And you can always go, if you're going late June, Simpson Creek Bears, and Bear the Ticks, you'll always find the Ozark Checker Spot. But you'll also find Silvery Crescents, Sleepy Orange, and a host of other species. I talked to Shawnee National Forest biologist about this, and I talked about Simpson Creek Bears. Oh yeah, we manage that for the plants, of course, right? Oh, they, was there any but you got great butterflies. Oh really? Can we care? They do now, right? So they know about it. Burncliff State Park, easy to get to. People go there to see the spring wildflowers, the rock formations. On the back side, there's a sandstone glade covered with uh, uh, red cedar. Here is a population of goatweed. Goatweed butterfly. We see it there every year. Two or three individuals. The tropical species, right? And this one. One of the Illinois' prettiest butterflies, and certainly it's only green one, the olive hair street. Feeds on red cedar. And here, the orange tip. There's a female, here's a couple of males courting her. The spring ephemeral butterfly. And this one, this is a phenomenon of global climate change. This didn't used to occur in Illinois. This is the gemmed satyr. This is one of those, you know, birders have little, little brown jobs. Little brown job. But look here, it has a little jewel right there. This highway called the gemmed satyr. They're the most difficult butterfly in the world to photograph because when you hit the shutter, they hear it and they leap into the air. You either get them or you don't. Right? So here's a female. The male, you see, this means I'm receptive. Mate with me. When you see the little gems there, long run seat. This is in the Chicago region. Why do we go to long run seat? I hate going to Chicago. <laughs> but Jim Weicker said, in that quote, well, you can you go long run seat, which is right on the edge of the interstate. You know, it's a, it's a big nature preserve, it's overrun by these delicate invasive species. We parked across the road, there was a six lanes of traffic to try to navigate to the other side. We walked in on this road, which is covered with uh, uh, exotic plants. Yeah. Queen Anne's Lace, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a name here, not. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Anne's Lace. Uh, Shimmery, yellow clover. Yeah, all kinds of crap. <laughs> Within. Within 30 seconds, we got our target species. This is the Baltimore checker spot. So okay. the denizen of a very local butterfly of marshes, Chicago region, feeds on turtle head, its only food plant, and they were all over the place. Okay. Somewhere in that big morass of, of, of vegetation, there were colonies up there. We also went to Illinois Beach State Park in May, early May, Illinois Beach State Park in early May is, ah. yeah. the day we were there, it was 40 degrees, it was windy, it was horrible. <coughs> we went out on the dunes, looked on the bearberry, see it? Hoary elephant. The bearberry is an endangered species in Illinois. The, the hoary elephant is not, but it's its only food plant. Okay? The hoary elephant. <coughs> Feeds on bearberry as a larvae and as an adult. It never flies more than about six inches off the ground. You go there in May, and there they are. You go there in June, and they're gone. Right? So, is this common? It's common right then, right there, right? As long as there's its food plant. So, what is the most unusual find that we have when we're doing the butterfly book? We were at Simpson Creek Barrens, saw this big spider web. And it was a Duke Sue looked at the base, laying at the base of the spider web was that. All four wings took a while for us to identify. This is the northern hair streak. This is a canopy dwelling hair streak. Nobody ever I don't know if anybody's ever ever photographed in a book that somebody happened on once. This is the only one we've ever seen. It obviously got caught in the net. And the, and the, the web, the, the spider had eaten it and cast aside all the wings, and there was. Oh right? Does that count? Absolutely. 
So, commercial. You want to find some of these sites. It's a couple of sources for you. Some of these places are not trivial to find. Iroquois County Conservation Area, if you get there, you're going to go, now what? Right? You have to know where to go, where to look. So these two books will help you. So, observations during a butterfly hunt. We notice predation on butterflies. We notice that butterflies like sweat. You know, this is that sweaty day when Sue was talking to the only hackberries. They like, we, we obviously hadn't maintained their car very well, salt re, re, residuals on it. One year we went to uh, Sand Ridge and there were probably tens of thousands of hackberry butterflies. I've never seen more butterflies anywhere except in the monarchs of Mexico or in the mountains. For one year, there were, I don't know, 100,000. You could hear them. There were so many. The raccoon dung was covered with them. The wet roads were covered with them. It was just amazing. So, interesting. Puddle clubbing. Puddle clubbing is where you see bachelor unmated butterflies gather at wet areas to obtain nutrients and to interact with each other. Here we have. One, two, three, three species of swallowtails. All, uh, all new males. If you want to, the tropical collectors know this. If you go to a public club and collect, you get pristine examples. They're all males, but you get pristine examples. Here's a public club of little yellows and alfalfa butterflies. Sitting on a wet spot. All of them do it. These eastern tail blues over over at Sand Ridge on a wet piece of sand, all lined up. Butterflies imbibe environmental fluids. A lot of them, a lot of the nymphalids don't feed on flowers. They feed on uh, nutrient-rich fluids that include environment, including this rotting box turtle. Here's that Ozark checker spot feeding on. Turtle goo, right? Doing really well. And the best polo club we've ever seen, and we've been all over the world, we've seen tropical polo clubs. We were hiking into the Shawnee Hills one year. We got to Barron Creek, and there were, this is a small park. There was a little seat coming out the edge of Barron Creek, and there were, I don't know, a thousand butterflies there. By the time we got our cameras and our, you know, what together, this is what was left. Two species, tiger swallowtail and spice bush. There was something there that they all wanted. Here's one over at Sand Ridge on the road, red spotted purples. Here's an interesting phenomenon. This is a, a you think of predators? Yeah, you think of when you have a picnic in the fall, the yellow jackets come bug you. Yellow jackets in the fall looking for meat. This one is eating, literally eating a pipevine swallowtail piece by piece. She would fly in, bite off a piece of the abdomen, fly back, come back, and meanwhile this butterfly sitting there flapping, going, oh, just kill me now, you know. And this one, this was at Bonnie's Prairie. This is a red spotted purple, and this is a viceroy. Same genus. Related. This is a, and yet this isn't a correct red spotted purple. You notice it's kind of orange? an introgressive hybrid. And this male was courting this female, and she was responding. These are different species, right? So the introgression, intergrade, interspecific hybridization. See what I got to witness here, right? Very cool. What their offspring look like? Who knows? So what's the status of all of this? Okay, status, everybody wants to know. Well, we went back to the historical records to come up with some of this stuff. Ironically, in 1878, the seventh report of the state entomologist discussed control measures, hand or chicken picking, turn your chickens out, for some, a sometimes pest of cabbage, the checkered white. If you want to go find a checkered white in Illinois today, you better bring, we found four or five, we maybe find four or five a year, and it used to be a pest, okay? Entomologists refer to it as the Southern Cabbage Butterfly. <coughs> Stephen Forbes wrote this report. A booklet by Gilbert Wright, 1951, called The Common Illinois Insects, had a plate on common Illinois butterflies, featured a southern dogface. 
abundant in the southern, I grew up in the southern part of the state. In the 50s and 60s, it's not abundant anymore. Uh, we know one place in northern Illinois where you can go and regularly find dog face, right? Otherwise, it's just happenstance. Irwin and Downing said we three wrote, of the thousands of Nisippi, that's the sleepy orange we have seen and captured. Who? In five years? So what does this tell you? This tells you something is happening, right? Something is going on. During 1961, a Chicago collector observed a thousand individuals of the Falcate orange tip in Union County. <coughs> I probably collected every one of them. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you see three or four individuals in a day, you, you live down there. Once, once in a while, you see a lot of them, but not thousands. No. Scattered through the landscape, you see them now and then. So this gives you a hint of what's going on. The last eyewind class we did on butterflies at Sand Ridge, we did a survey. There are 49 butterflies, and there are eight species on one milkweed. Okay? and regal fridlaries and all sorts of things. It was just absolutely astounding. This was in 19, 2009, something like that. What does it look like today, the last several years we've been there? Like that. They're gone, there aren't any. What has happened? You notice this, somebody's gone through the disc, I'm not sure that would mean nameless, and planted wildlife cover crops. The butterflies disappeared. Yeah. Is it cause and effect? I don't know. Okay. Pretty much damning circumstantial evidence. All right, major threats to Illinois butterflies. And there's a bunch of them. Habitat is We all know that, right? Gotta have a place to live. BT corn. In our book, there's a chapter on BT corn and butterflies written by our corn entomologist, Jill Spencer, who did a thorough survey of the literature to find out the state of knowledge. Uh, this, this, what we know about BT corn and butterflies equilibrates what we know about fracking and environmental hazards. You know it's not probably good, but no one has done the research yet. And most of the research has been funded by Monsanto. <laughs> you know, right now the research is inconclusive. As a biologist, I know better. Pesticides, neonicotinoids. Oh, holy crap. Neonicotinoids are the DDT of the 21st century. We put them on corn, on seed crops. It's water soluble. It ends up not in the groundwater, but in the soil moisture. Remember old butterflies sitting in the mud? Okay. Neonicotinoids have been banned in England and in parts of Oregon. Okay. So this may be one of the issues, global climate change. Some species enter Illinois, some species leave Illinois, but one of the main things we're looking at in global climate change is the phenology of butterflies and their typical nectar plants. I'll give you an example, prairie white fringed orchid, right? It's pollinated by, it's not a butterfly, but a moth. The, basically the white line sphinx. So now a month separated in their phenologies. So who has to pollinate the white line sphinxes? Volunteers with a paintbrush, right? No pollinator anymore. So who knows? Exotic species. I mean, how can exotic species? Well, one year we went to uh, Scrub Oak Sand Prairie at the time to see regals. There were no butterflies. There weren't any. Why? Because every single milkweed <laughs> Look like that. It was a big year for Japanese beetles. There wasn't enough nectar available. When you did see a butterfly, all the beetles would just elbow it away. Right? There weren't any. Something you don't think about. One-dimensional habitat management. You've got a five-acre prairie. It's got 22 <coughs> species of butterflies. 21 of which over winter is a chrysalis. You burn it. Okay. That's one-dimensional habitat management. We don't do that so much anymore. 